The village of Zhebek Joli in Saryagash district of Turkestan province is located at the border crossing with Uzbekistan. On July 13, 2023, a terrible thing happened in this rather busy village. On this day, a local resident applied to the district police department with a statement about the disappearance of her five-year-old daughter. Yerkajan Nurmakan went out into the street and disappeared. At 13 Fuao, the girl asked her mother Indira Yerimbetova for a walk. Yerkajan was in the woman's field of vision, but when her mother was distracted for only five minutes, her daughter disappeared. At 1.10 p.m., the woman had already gone after her and started looking for her, but her daughter was nowhere to be found. Indira ran down the street and called her little girl's name, hoping she would hear her voice and respond. The worried mother ran to the houses of her neighbors and asked if any of them had seen her daughter. But unfortunately, every time the answer was negative. Without thinking long, Indira informed the girl's father and ran to the police to write a statement. While the mother was writing a statement, the girl's father, Nurjan Erezhepov, immediately went to the neighbor's house, but found nothing there but a drunken man. Why the father went there in the first place, it turns out there was a reason. Saidolim Gaibnazarov was a neighbor of the family. Everyone in the village knew about his criminal past. The man had been tried twice, the first time for murder, the second time for intentional infliction of grave harm to health. For the latter offense, received only three years of restricted freedom. That's why the girl's father went there first, but didn't find anything. Soon, fellow villagers joined the search. According to her mother, she first looked for her daughter behind the fence to see if she had been carried away by the current of the ditch. Indira was sure that no one had taken her daughter and she could not have gone far away. Near the family's house, there is a store with a video camera, and the girl's mother went there to watch the video recordings. The camera did indeed capture the girl walking out of the gate from her yard and heading somewhere. Unfortunately, the angle of view of the camera was small, so it was not possible to see where exactly the girl went next. At 13.02, the girl appeared in the range of the camera and then disappeared. Sometime later, it became known that one of the neighbors of the Rezhepov family had a video surveillance camera installed on the house, which had a good view of the road, and therefore should have captured the girl walking along it. Unfortunately, reviewing the footage from this camera yielded nothing. Yerkajan was not on it. Given that the grocery store and the neighbor's house where the surveillance cameras were installed were located just a few houses away from each other, it was a logical conclusion that Yerkajan had not moved far from her house and was somewhere nearby. But where to look for her? The girl seemed to have fallen through the ground. By evening, it seemed that every corner in the settlement had been checked by people. Residents searched all over the village, but the little girl seemed to have disappeared, leaving no trace. More and more people joined the search for the girl, and some approached her parents to share their guesses which coincided with Nurjan's. The locals were sure that if the girl was not seen on other CCTV cameras, then she had not gone far from home. And since a dangerous man lives near them, perhaps he has something to do with this story. Once again, Father Yerkajan goes to the house next door. This time, several men go there with him. And again, nothing. There was no one in the house except the dead drunk neighbor no trace of the little girl was found there either. As dusk began to envelop the streets of the village, the villagers were in no hurry to take shelter in their homes. Instead, they were preoccupied with the search for the young daughter of Indira and Nurjan, who were gripped by despair. At a certain point, a group of young men decided to inspect the Gaib Nazarov's house again, this time more thoroughly, leaving no corner untouched. Yerzan Akhmetov and his friends went to an old, dilapidated house. At first, it seemed that their efforts were in vain and that they were only wasting time exploring this gloomy place. As they were about to leave, one of them noticed a small pink spot among the piles of trash. He pulled at the edge, and soon 
a pink baby dress, was in his hands. Later, Yerjan will remember how they were all gripped by terror and fear, and how their heads were filled with dark thoughts. But at that moment, they pushed them away, hoping to find the girl alive. One of the friends stayed in the house to look after the drunken neighbor, and Yerjan and another friend went up to the attic, the last place where they had not yet looked for Yerkajan Nurmakan. There they found a slate. Yerjan stepped on the slate and saw the girl. She was lying motionless, covered only by the slate. It was immediately clear that her death was violent. There were bruises and abrasions on her body, especially on her face, as well as numerous stab wounds. Witnesses would later report that there was not a whole spot left on the girl's body. The fate of that day remained unknown, if not for the sudden appearance of the police at the Gaib Nazarov's house. On that terrible July evening, the locals were ready to take justice into their own hands and burn down the house of the alleged murderer. But the police managed to evacuate the suspect and calm the agitated people. The suspect in the Yarkij Nurmakan murder case was placed in a temporary detention center. The police opened a criminal case under the article on murder and appointed the necessary expertise, as well as started a pretrial investigation. The detainee did not deny his guilt and admitted that he was very drunk that day and did not realize his actions. He claimed that at some point he heard the voice of a child playing in the street, which turned out to be his neighbor's five-year-old daughter, Yerkejan. Gayab Nazarov claimed that he seemed to have lost his mind and, using various tricks, lured the little girl into the yard of his house. Further events of that terrible July day were established by experts. According to their conclusions, Gayab Nazarov abused the girl and then, probably in order to hide the traces of a serious crime, killed her. The tragic death of a little girl shook the entire country. Hundreds of people came to see her off, and angry villagers accused the court and police of failing to isolate a dangerous criminal who had been detained several times before. Security forces on duty in the village blocked a crowd intent on burning down the suspect's house. It was not an easy task to calm down the furious people. On the same day, the General Prosecutor's Office announced the filing of an appeal against the lenient sentence previously handed down to the defendant. An investigation into the possible negligence of probation officers was also launched. The president instructed to thoroughly investigate the circumstances of the tragedy and consider the legality of the previous sentence, as well as to strengthen criminal liability for particularly dangerous crimes. It turned out that during the preliminary investigation, the injured party forgave the defendant, who compensated for the damage, and asked not to impose a strict punishment. Unfortunately, this decision led to the death of the child. The relatives of the murdered girl are sure that in this case he did not act alone, but in collusion with other persons. Investigators promised to give final conclusions after forensic examination. The villagers are still afraid for their children, fearing that the other accomplices of the crime are at large. At the trial, Gaib Nazarov stated that before the tragic events, he had been on a long bender, so he does not remember anything. But during the investigation, he said that he was angry, and when the girl started crying, he decided to kill her. He strangled the child and then stabbed her with a knife. Gaib Nazarov admitted the charge only partially. That is, he agreed with murder, but not with rape. Although all the expert examinations were conducted and the analysis of biological fluids left no doubt as to who they belonged to. At the final trial, Gaib Nazarov behaved calmly and even aloofly. He asked the judge not to impose a strict punishment. When asked by journalists whether he regretted what he had done, the pedophile did not answer, only apologized to the girl's parents, but according to them, it sounded sloppy and insincere. He apologized for killing our daughter, but what good is that to us? You can't lighten the sentence. He must be punished for life, said the father of the murdered girl. The court found Gaib Nazarov sane and guilty of committing crimes under Part 3 of Article 99, murder, and Part 2 of Article 121. 
violent acts of a sexual nature of the criminal code of the Republic of Kazakhstan. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and chemical castration, and he is also obliged to pay moral damages to the injured party in the amount of 100 million tenge. Support the video with a like and the channel with a subscription. And all the best to you, be careful.